Hey, uh, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this finally Friday, right? TGIF, that is. Hopefully, you got the weekend off. If not, maybe take the day off anyway. We're a couple days. So, we, we got a 4.3 earthquake coming into the area north of Idaho Falls. Now, this is uh, just off of this fault system called the Red Rock Fault. Uh, Sheep Creeks section. This area has been showing a little bit of seismic activity here recently. By the way, I've seen this show up here on the Yellowstone uh, seismograph stations down here. Notice that little uh, reading right here. It was picked up there in Yellowstone as well. Um, the magnitudes are getting on the larger size compared to the past couple weeks here where we've been seeing some twos and threes along this fault system. There's many different faults that are leading up here towards the Yellowstone area. Uh, this 4.3, 10 kilometers deep near Lima, Lima or Lima, Montana. It has been reviewed. Not for sure the population density density out here. It doesn't look like it's next to any major towns. We've got one person reporting just some light earthquake activity, although it's definitely a legit earthquake, that's for sure. Uh, I do want to take a look at historical data back here and see what we have specifically around this region. This could be uh, a good indicator here of some regional stress transferring over towards the Yellowstone area. Now the Hebgen Lake region has seen quite a bit of earthquake activity in the past and some rather large earthquakes as well. But we're going to go ahead and check out this real quick through the USGS model and uh, search the earthquake catalog book here. What we're going to do is start with 4.5 and above and uh, we're just going to go back historically here since about the year 1000. So I, I just enter that number just to make sure I got it all covered as far as the uh, potential quakes up here. Now, let's see here. Let me make sure I'm in the right area. We've got the three mountain ranges here. Uh, let's see here. Beaver Head Range. So we want to include these areas right around here just to see uh, potentially what we got here. Where did it go? Hold on a second here. Did I close it out? um oh there we go <laughs> it's hot it's 100 and, uh, 104 but feels like 110 around here that's the uh local weather here at my house outside of chico so i don't want to include all of yellowstone because we know yellowstone does have some earthquake activity specifically there around the caldera but i want to look at plate tectonic motion here across this area of the beaverhead range and then there's another mountain range here just to the east where this four pointer struck on. So we're gonna make sure that that is covered, which it is. And uh, we're just gonna see what's going on out here. Take a look at the historical data. Four point, uh, what did I pull up? 4.5 and above. All right. Um, it looks as though this area did see some activity here a couple years or so ago, uh, 4.6 back in 2019. Now, roughly, uh, within the same area as today's earthquake, we did have a 5.1, 1965, and a 5.1, 1999. So it looks like earthquake activity out here um, occurs at a regular interval between 30 or uh, around 25, 30 years or so. This earthquake, uh, 4.6. But it goes to show you that we can see some larger earthquakes there, at least above the 4.5 level that we're seeing today. All right, that was oh, 4.3, excuse me. That was a 4.3 that we've seen uh, just coming in uh, to the area. But a little bit further up north here, these earthquakes start to get a little bit bigger. And that's what I'm saying here, that a lot of this movement is uh, plate tectonic action here. It's well away from, obviously, well away from the plate boundary. Um, and Yellowstone over here, the plumbing system, all that stuff is underneath this area. And it extends a little bit further in certain regions. But this is due to uh, plate tectonic stress here between the North American uh, plate. And uh, technically up against the old Craton region. That's this landmass right here that you see that creates the plains. Relatively flat areas that uh, has not been moved. It's basically been fairly stable for the last couple million years. Uh, right up against that area. So uh, a lot of this can be pinpointing towards some uh, larger potential movement here. It looks like within the area, 1897 was a lot, the last 6.4 area 
um, right here on the map, at least the last larger one. Now Hebgen Lake uh, did see a large one over here back in, um, well, where'd it go? It looks like maybe they took it off. There was a much bigger one back in, um, well, it's a while back here. I may have to scoot this over just a tad bit. Uh, but as you can see here on the map, things are a little on the uh, active side here for the Idaho area. Now back over here across the uh, Sawtooth Fault System, I believe that is. There's the Sawtooth. Okay, so this fault system right here, I'm not for sure what the, this one is. It looks like... Uh, there's Sawtooth. There is the um, Lost River Fault, Warm Springs section, a couple other fault ranges that go through these mountain ranges here. You can see them forming, right? So those are plate uh, or uh, fault boundaries, fault systems here, all leading up uh, towards this general area where we can see some larger earthquake activity. Now, let me redefine the um, search list here real quick because I want to show you the Hebgen Lake area can see um, some pretty large earthquake activity. Let's redraw this on the map. I just go over a little bit more, but uh, I could have swear it was within this area. Let me double check here and see. Uh, okay, there it is. That was a 7.2 just outside the Hebgen Lake area. This is a little bit closer to the uh, uh, within the Yellowstone caldera than than I thought. Um, I remember I remember this being called the Hebgen Lake Estates earthquake. Hebgen Lake is way over here. Well, about 10, 15 miles or so. Um, but I was certain that that earthquake was centered more over here. It's a little odd. Hmm. Uh, either way, some large earthquake activity can occur within this region here, folks, of Idaho. Uh, potentially larger as well. It's been a little while since we've seen any, you know, large size earthquake up there across Idaho. And that uh, could be, a, you know, a good sign to keep an eye on things here throughout the Idaho area. The last seven days of movement across Idaho. Let's go ahead and pull that up here. We've been noticing, you know, that little trend that's pointing up here. And then we see this activity kind of spread up out here. You can almost see it within the mountain ranges, how they've been forming throughout time. Uh, of course, Yellowstone's had a little bit of seismic increase in activity as well. Uh, the Yellowstone map, let me pull that up here today, hasn't been very active yet. There is that 4.3 showing up across the park notice that uh, signature right here pretty nice very nice signature this earthquake here is the 6.3 uh, there in mexico from earlier this morning but as you can see local seismic activity has been minimal today there around the yellowstone area now the previous day had a couple small spikes uh, the previous day to that had more earthquake activity this is all general local seismic activity here across Yellowstone. So increasing movement here across the Intermountain West regions here uh, with Idaho uh, showing some, some moderate movement here today. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. See if this may be turning into something a little bit on the uh, larger side than what we're seeing right now. West Coast activity over here across the Blanco Fracture Zone. Uh, this earthquake coming in just earlier this afternoon as well. 4.6 uh, right there at the uh, uh, towards the end of the Blanco Fracture Zone. Uh, that could be uh, a good indicator out here of uh, maybe seeing some earthquake activity across the uh, California region. Last time we seen this activity, it all kind of pinpointed some movement down here uh, into the southern end of the Cascadia. But we'll cover that a little bit later on this evening. Uh, slight uptick across Southern California as well. Big Bear City seen some activity, although this movement mostly on the smaller microquake size so just be on guard up there around idaho i know this area not a whole lot of population density up here but uh for those that are you know definitely want to be uh, uh have an earthquake plan if you live within this area idaho falls sits down here about 60 miles or so uh, so this region right here we had what one report of uh, of someone filling it satellite imagery here shows um looks like some type of um agricultural stuff out here i know these green circles out in the desert right they have these massive sprinkler systems that uh put those beautiful features on the ground 
uh, from the in the uh, satellite imagery. But this is a looks like a little town here. I think that's uh, Lima, Lima. Very small populated town. Um, this earthquake, of course, striking well underneath this area. I'm not seeing any, um, you know, oil fields or any pumping operations out there. So purely plate stress at this point. We'll continue to watch this area uh, for some further movement. Uh, but also at the same time, we'll keep an eye on Yellowstone, see if that stirs anything up up there in terms of earthquake swarming. I do have the Lake Yellowstone station up. And... Um, other stations around the globe that are, um, of course, continue, continuing to monitor activity 24-7. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Just kind of wanted to give an update here on this activity here across the Idaho area. Um, you know, it's a little bit bigger than uh, what we've been seeing here for the past couple weeks. So that could be, as I mentioned again, it could be pointing to something um you know above this magnitude looks like they just downgraded it to a 4.2 usgs there you go we'll catch you guys back here later tonight have a good one folks stay cool